I really wanted that Surface Pro. But I got two Lenovo's. Why two? Because their hardware hierarchy confuses me completely. So you have the Yoga 730, right? This one with a 15 inch display. From what I heard, you get a pretty good performance, no matter what configuration you get, depending on your needs. But you get an okay screen, you get an okay keyboard, you get an okay design, okay speakers, and an okay battery life. Like, more like a bad battery life, actually. It got pretty lukewarm reviews. Not like this one. The best two-in-one laptop of 2017, according to The Verge. Lenovo calls this a more premium computer. So I checked it out, turns out both have the same CPU, RAM and storage options. However, this one has a better display. People say that it's a better keyboard, better speakers. You get a better hinge and a greatly enhanced battery life. All this for a price bump that's about 15% across the configurations. So what's the confusion? Well, I mean, this one might seem like a less interesting computer, but with this one, you get dedicated graphics. You get NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050. On top of that, well, I mean, you get the bigger screen size, 15.6 versus 13.9. So that's interesting as well. And I mean, for a 15% cheaper computer, well, I mean, you could just invest that money in upgraded specs and end up with a better computer in some ways and a lesser in others. But how exactly do you compare a better hinge with a bigger screen? How do you compare dedicated graphics with a better battery life? Well, my name is Gabriel and I'm gonna tell you how I compare these two computers and how I could choose one over the other. First thing first, let's talk about the design. So here I have the 730, pretty minimalistic, it feels sturdy. I wouldn't call it premium though, because it's too boxy and rather bland, if you want my opinion. I like the small bezels. These are small, all right? Like the elevated screen. It gets you a little better neck posture when you type on the keyboard. Uh, good selection of ports. You get a one Thunderbolt 3 USB-C. You get one HDMI. You get one microphone jack. They're still useful. No SD card reader though, which is not shocking, but it's a shame. However, you do have two USB 3.0, so you can just charge your camera to one of them now. That's not the end of the world. And the computer itself uses its own charger. It is not magnetic. So the keyboard here is sufficient. The keys are a little light, they're a little shallow, but the tactile click is satisfying. Vertical travel is low at one millimeter, which is a little less than on the 920, which has 1.3 millimeter. But does it make it more comfortable? Well, marginally, yeah, but I wouldn't choose one computer over another for a difference that's almost imperceptible. I mean, they're exactly the same keyboards. Both have two level of backlight. So unless you have fingers that really ask for keyboards that feel like mattresses, this keyboard will do just fine, seriously. I do wish that you had a memory pad on the 730. Because look at that, I mean, you have all that space. I feel like it would make sense practically, of course, but also just aesthetically. Like this just sort of look empty, doesn't it? The obvious difference between the two computers is the enormous difference in size. So for a screen that's here, 12% smaller, you get a 40% lighter body. That's 23% thinner. So both computers, they're portable, but you know, with the big one, you take it in your arm and you put it into your bag carefully. Whereas with the other one, you take it between your fingers and you can put it in, you know, the smaller compartment of that bag. Like, that's the difference. This Ultrabook definitely feels premium. And it all comes down to the size factor because for the rest, it's all pretty similar. Here you get a hidden fan right before the hinge. 
this is pretty cool. You have the same fan on the 730, but there you can see it. But you also have a big grid on the bottom of the 730. Except then that the power button here sticks out a little less, both visually and uh, physically, so you have less chance to accidentally turn off your computer. I checked and the bezels are actually one millimeter thinner on the 920, if that sort of thing excites you. I hope not. Uh, you get a little line on the keyboard here and well, just to mention that I enjoyed both touchpads on both devices. The digital sensors is fine and I didn't notice any differences between the two computers. The port situation is slightly different here. You lose the HDMI port and one USB 3.0 is traded for a USB-C port, which here is used to connect the computer. For people who hate bringing different chargers around, that's surely a plus. The second biggest physical difference between the two computers is the hinge. Some people call it fancy. I don't know, like in the silver color, it just reminds me of that awful chain I used to wear back in high school. It is definitely more sturdy though, especially at extreme angles. You're gonna notice it for sure while trying to open the computer. Like it's really stiff. There's no way you're gonna be able to open it with one hand like you could on the 73. Even with two hands, it's a little fastidious to be honest. But there must be a good side of having a better hinge, right? Especially for someone interested in the drawing experience of a two-in-one. Well, yeah, I mean, you're gonna notice that the 730 wobbles more, especially while trying to draw in presentation mode. The problem is that even a stiffer hinge will make it necessary to hold the screen for any serious work, and it becomes uncomfortable. So you have two options. Either you put that tablet flat on the table, or you use the tech mode, and that's where the hinge difference becomes meaningful. What I mean by that is that the 730 can only hold an angle of maybe 20 to 30 degrees, whereas the better hinge here can hold like 10 degrees, so that's really comfortable to draw. Also, the smaller footprint of the 920 makes it possible to use a smaller desk in tent mode, because it can take a lot of space. So I calculated 44 centimeters wide is necessary here on the 920, where it goes up to 48 centimeters on the 730. Of course, you could always get around limitations. So I was in a 21 market for the drawing experience, right? But maybe you aren't, and that's where I need to intervene to say that neither product is a comfortable tablet drawing. The edges of both products are rather sharp, and there's just no way you'll be snugging that four pound computer in your bed to read the news on a Sunday morning. It gets a little better with the 920, but the strong hinge actually annoys me when folding and unfolding the keyboard. Also, just touching the buttons at the back, it just feels wrong. If what you're looking for is a more tablet oriented device, there's better options. The Surface Pro comes to mind. This doesn't make a good media consumption device in tent mode or presentation mode because the speakers are then sort of blocked or distorted by the screen. The fact that you get a more balanced sound profile in laptop mode that you can still access the keyboard, combined with the general unpleasantness of folding the device backwards, it just makes me wonder why somebody would buy this project with no drawing. On the subject of speakers, I was actually sort of impressed here with the 730 with ample volume and decent lows. The volume resonates inside the body at high volume, it might distort, but at least it doesn't sound tiny like on most laptops. Speaking of sounding tiny, I wasn't impressed by the 920 in comparisons. I thought it would be better than the 730 because I saw that on reviews, but I think people were comparing it to the 13 inch version of this model. For the screen, I can't really compare the two models here because it's just happened that I could afford a 4K panel on the 730, but not on a 920. The screen obviously looks much better here. Like seriously, if you think that 4K doesn't matter on a laptop, you're just, you're wrong. What I've read is that the 920 has a better color accuracy, reaching almost 100% sRGB. 
Both have IPS displays presenting good contrast, deep blacks, good viewing angles, but I find the 730 to be more reflective. The panel is plenty bright for me, even more than the 920, which might not be the case if I had an HD screen on it. Weirdly enough, the texture from a pen feels more dragging on the 730, but I might actually enjoy the added resistance. The texture is a little unequal though. Hopefully this is a flaw with this particular model. So just a quick word on performance. Not that I think it's not important, it really is. It's one of the biggest reasons why I chose these products. It's just that you probably already saw the benchmarks are on already. So basically both very good if you disable intelligent cooling here. It causes uh, throttling, so it's important to put it off. I could also undervolt by 100 millivolt both of them for longevity, so they stay quiet and they stay cool and uh, very fast NMV, N NVMe SSD storage. Um, of course, the 730, as I mentioned, has a very important bonus of having that GeForce GTX 1050 GPU for video rendering or games. So both, you know, very good. Um, these are actually the only computers I could afford that had 16 gigabytes of RAM, an i7 8th gen processor. So I really expect uh, good performance for years and years. This version of the 1050 has 4 gigabytes of graphic memory and is good enough for gaming. That is if you don't expect to run the latest titles with the absolute best settings. I'm getting 35 frames per second with the latest Batman with almost maxed out settings in 1080p. It's also nice to play slightly less demanding games in 4K like Bioshock Remastered or Cuphead. Dedicated graphics on the 730 is a big plus, but the battery life on the 920 is dominating. Uh, I'm getting a strong 10 hours of moderate usage on this, and that's almost the double of what I got on the 730. So, I went through the most notable differences between the two computers. Now how to choose. What I like to do when comparing pieces of technology is to put a money value over the differences. Because at the end of the day, it's all a matter of affordability. If the 920 was half the price of the 730, or vice versa, it would be a no-brainer. So it all comes down to how much is the battery life worth for me? How much is worth the dedicated GPU? Like the, the question is not the price of the actual graphic card. Like it does matter to a certain extent, but what's really important is the value it has for me, for my lifestyle in the long term. So for example, the smaller size of the 920, I really like it. I mean, you can more easily carry it around in a bag, but is it a game changer? Is it gonna, you know, make the difference between, oh, I bring my computer to the library and now it's too heavy, forget it. Like, probably not. So I'd say I value the difference at $100. However, the bigger screen size definitely adds flexibility for me. And it's great not having to scroll just as much, and I can dispose of windows more easily, making it much more efficient for multitasking. I might value the extra room at $150. Okay, so what's next? Well, the hinge, what's that worth? It turns out, as we said, that it's not really a big deal, and it can actually annoy at times. So I don't think I'd be willing to invest like more than $30 on the 732 get better battery life is interesting like it's like the double and i think you know it's nice to have a better battery but i think the battery question might be overstated i see people mentioning how much they work in a day and they're like yeah well i need like eight hours of battery life but come on just just bring this like just bring a charger it's not that heavy and i don't think i'd be willing to invest more than 200 dollars on the battery of the 920 on the 730. The 4K panel here might be guilty of stealing a big chunk of that battery life, but turns out I think that's also worth $200. Like the difference from a 5 hours battery life to a 10 hours battery life is gonna matter a few days, maybe every month, 
uh, if you move around, you know, but the 4K panel, it's always before your eyes. You're gonna see it, you know, every time you use your computer and you will see the difference. So that's maybe more important, but let's say both are $200 value for me. Better GPU, I'm not like a hardcore gamer, but it's fun to know that I can actually play recent games and do some video editing and stuff. So I have like a more flexible computer for the future. So yeah, $200 for that. And better speakers, that's nice. That's worth $50 for me, I think something like that. In this case, the 730 model I found actually cost me 1750 Canadian dollars with an outstanding terabyte of storage, while the 920 with only 256 gigabyte of storage costed me $1500. I can easily add another $400 value to the added storage, minus the 250 price difference, and the 730 is the clear winner with an added value of $420 adjusted for price. Again, what you value will change, but this is a method I like to use to put things into perspective. I really wanted that Surface Pro. It's so sleek and portable, and it has a great screen and battery life. But what I really need is a more productivity-oriented computer. I need something that's going to last me for a long time, like through the end of university to the start of my career. There will be compromises with any product. But which compromise compromises too much? That's up to you. Thanks for watching.